What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Simon Tech once again, coming at you with yet another how-to video. So today I'm gonna to try to walk you through replacing thermal pads and thermal paste on any graphics card, no matter what. The sample model, though, is going to be this big boy. It is the GeForce RTX 3080 Master from Gigabyte. Thanks to Red Panda Mining viewers and, of course, his video, I caught uh, some additional pads that I need to replace. And we are going to talk about how to replace pads in general and what you should be looking for on any GPU. And so, first things first. So before we get into it, I want to talk a little bit about flash routers. I have an affiliate link with them now. It will be in the description below. If you want to put all your mining rigs behind a VPN, the quickest and simplest way possible is to head on over to flash router and go ahead and purchase one of their pre-flashed routers with DDWRT. It includes an easy to use web GUI for you to configure your VPN and automatically connect to services such as NordVPN at the router level. So check it out. Now, first things first, if you have a card and you need to replace some thermal pads, Google it and see if you can find anybody that's done it already. What that will hopefully help you figure out is the pad thickness so you can order them on Amazon. I use the cheap Amazon thermal pads. You can get big 200 by 200 millimeter sheets for under $20 and I'll link those down in the description. I buy because I'm a miner and I have a whole bunch of different graphics cards. I buy 200 millimeter sheets uh, across the entire range. So from 0.5 millimeter all the way up to three millimeter. And we'll talk about why that's important here if you're trying to replace it on any GPU. So in the Gigabytes case, of course, the first thing we need to do is figure out how to get the cooler off. And the first time I did this, the big mistake I made was only taking the cooler off and replacing the pads and not removing the back plate, which we'll talk about as well. So for this particular card, what you'll notice is that we have four screws with springs on them. This is gonna be common across all GPUs. And essentially what that's going to uh, mean is that those four screws are what hold the cooler or the heat sink, the primary heat sink onto the GPU core. These four screws are the most important screws when putting the GPU back together because you wanna tighten them evenly in a crisscross pattern. So corner to corner in a star pattern and, and do it a little bit at a time until it is, it is fully screw down until the screw stops. Don't over tighten and be sure to be careful about stripping the screws. Then you're going to go ahead and need to find the rest of the screws that adhere the rest of whatever heat sink to the GPU is. And in this case, they are all, there are about one, two, three, let's see, four, five, six, seven. And that will get the cooler off. When you're pulling the cooler off, you want to be careful, especially with how big these heat sinks are now, it's pretty difficult. And there's a couple things you wanna pay attention to. It's gonna be, of course, the connectors for the fans and any other devices, like on this card, you have the LCD screen on here and, and so on and so forth. So you want to make sure that when you are you know taking it apart the a you note the size of the screws and where they go and then b you note where the fan headers need to go and like i said any other devices and make sure that you get them out it can be pretty hard to do especially on this Aorus card it was pretty difficult at that point this particular card in a lot of cases the back plate will come off first on this card, the back plate is also adhered with screws from the other side of the PCB, the screw into the back plate. So you have to take the cooler off first and then you take the back plate off with four additional screws. And that's what I didn't do the first time. And once I took it off, I saw what everybody was talking about. It only had three pads on it one of the pads was on the core and then there were two pads of course on uh, the outer edges uh, to covering some of the memory module locations but not all of them 
So for those particular ones, I use three millimeter because I measured them. So let's talk about that. When you're replacing thermal pads, how do you know what size they are? Well, I use a pair of calipers, okay? Now calipers aren't gonna be exact because thermal pads are gonna smush, but you can get close enough to where you can understand what size was on there. This is important because you wanna replace the same thickness on those pads. If you went too thick on a pad, you're gonna have an uneven cooling surface on other portions, especially on a card that has this many, many memory modules, this many caps, and so on and so forth. So just take the calipers, and I'll leave a Amazon link for some calipers down in the description as well. And you're gonna push the caliper down and get as close as you can. And then you will go to hopefully what you've done now, if you're a miner, you will go to your little pad bin and pull out the proper size for that particular replacement. In a lot of cases, there will be multiple thicknesses of pads on the card in this particular case we had three possibly four there's a one where i couldn't really tell exactly and we'll have to see uh you know it looks like we got pretty much even across the board but uh, it did look like we had a cup maybe one more maybe five different sizes in this particular case i just went with one millimeter two millimeter and three millimeters uh, and basically you can tell the difference on the front side because the gray is what I had for one millimeter and the blue is what I had for the two millimeter. And then on the back side on the, this particular card, the two millimeter was over the core uh, because it has some rise, it rises up a little bit. And then we had the three millimeter over the memory module portions on this particular card. Once you've done that on this card, obviously you have to put the back plate on first. So you wanna do the pads for the back plate first, then adhere the back plate back to the PCB, flip it over, apply the pads on the front side or on the core side of it. And then I use a little tool in my iFixit kit that's a little metal tool to pull the plastic off so I'm not getting any oil from my fingers on, it, on there. Speaking of, Yes, these pads were leaky as crap. It reminds me of the, I believe it was EVGA back in the 10 series had this issue on launch. I don't remember if it was Gigabyte, probably was. Gigabyte seems to be using some pretty poor thermal pads right now. I will say their one millimeter pads were not oily, but in breaking down, but their two millimeter pads were. And the two millimeter pads on this card in particular were the ones that were on the memory modules. So keep that in mind, their three millimeter pads were doing this as well, breaking down with that oily kind of film. So pretty big deal if you do have a gigabyte. Here's the thing, even if you're gaming on this and you want to just RMA it, which I would try to do normally, uh, because you know it is an expensive card and even though we do have right to repair uh, you never know what they're going to try to do to screw you over i had a buddy though just recently return a 6900 xt with overheating problems and once they got it the vendor got it and essentially refunded him and didn't send him a card so you need to keep in mind that the reason why you might want to do this no matter if you're gaming or mining is going to be that the availability on these cards is low. So you, you don't have cards that you can RMA at this time. And if you don't have cards that you can RMA at this time, you're just gonna get a refund and end up with no GPU. So you might wanna consider just going ahead and repairing it, and that's what I would suggest. So once you've obviously done the back plate, you flip it back over, you put the pads on, you put the thermal paste on. In this case, I'm using thermal MX4, I've been using it for years. It's great paste, uh, it's straightforward. It's not anything crazy like GLID GC Extreme, but GLID GC Extreme does break down. So I use that like when I'm overclocking and stuff and having fun, but for mining rigs, I don't use it. I, I wouldn't recommend it. And then, like I said, for the pads, we just use the cheap pads from Amazon, the little blue ones. Links to all this will be in the description. 
So then you get the, that all set up. I do use a thermal paste spreader when doing GPUs because it's already hard enough to get it mounted, the cooler mounted back on. You don't want to also be worrying about getting your dot spread correct, right? It's just too much. I wouldn't even mess with it. Get a good thin film across the whole thing, call it a day, slap the cooler back on, and then on the then you're going to want to flip it back over, making sure, of course, when you put the cooler back on, you got to put all the fan headers back on, plus any additional, right? And then you're going to flip it back over. And I always start with the four screws to uh, that have the springs on them. And that's because I want to make sure that the core is getting proper pressure onto the card. I will start all of them and then start all the rest of the screws. And then once I have everything started to make sure that it's all aligned properly, I'll do the four crisscross that we talked about earlier, tighten all those down, and then go across the rest of the, the back plate or screws and screw them down in. So we have completed it and we are gonna test it. If you guys recall, this is the GPU that was losing power. Now, of course, um, I had replaced the pads at, at one point. I didn't replace the pads between the back plate. Maybe I didn't get exact on the pad thickness, so I'm hoping this resolves it. And we're gonna go ahead and get it plugged in right now. Alrighty, so the hardware driver is installed and let's go ahead and see if we resolved our issue. So if you guys recall, we basically were having the power consumption drop down. We have the kilowatt here to monitor as well. And of course the core temperature is here. It's around 43C, somewhere around there. The fans are spinning now, which is good. And here's our GPU power. So we're gonna go ahead and head on over to our miners window and run Phoenix Miner. So our goal is just to make sure that it's maintaining that still. We are maintaining around 300 watts. Okay, so it is better. Let's go ahead and let this run for about 10 to 20 minutes. Let's check the kilowatt here. So if you take a look at the kilowatt, we are at 463 watts right now and it is holding. And we're still maintaining that power. So we're gonna go ahead and try to leave it here and then we will verify that overclocks work now as well. All right, so now that we know there's not an issue there, we're gonna go ahead and get hardware info open, MSI afterburner open. And we are gonna try to overclock the memory to like 750 first. All right, so GPU memory is maintaining. We're at around 90 mega hash a second. And it does appear that we aren't having any thermal throttling issues. So we're gonna go ahead and bump this up to 800 now. Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and go up to 850 now. And then let's go ahead and try 900. We aren't getting a hard crash yet. So let's go to 950, up to 95 mega hash. Let's go ahead and go up to 1000. 95 mega hash a second, 95.8, it's getting a little higher. Let's go ahead and go up to 1100 and there's the crash. So this particular card, there we go. We'll go ahead and get the close up. Principle of it, we'll get a review out for you guys with the full overclock later. I wanna give a huge shout out to the comments for helping me out and replacing those thermal pads on the back plate. It looks like it was a great success. We're no longer having the thermal throttle, drop the power, and things are good to go. I hope the video is helpful to give you an idea on how to replace thermal pads on pretty much any GPU. If you have any questions ever, just let me know. It looks like it did come back up, so it wasn't a hard crash, so that's pretty good. Um, but it does look like I don't have silicon lottery on this memory either. It looks like we're gonna be sitting around 95 mega hash a second. I'm fine with that, a lot better than 70 mega hash a second while burning up my memory modules. So, you know, it is 
what it is, and I think that we are going to be able to move forward. So be sure to check out the affiliate links uh, down in the description. If you need any of the equipment or tools or pads, be sure to use the affiliate link because I get a nice little kickback from that. And I'll see you next Tuesday.